Good evening. Thank you for coming. Thank you to the creator, Michael March, of this wonderful festival, and to Guillaume and all the wonderful younger people I've met who've given their time to this amazing discourse and conversation. Ahoya. So I have here tonight two old friends who will be performing uh, four pieces with me. Pavla Yonsonova and Marka Mikova. And they are best known on the Czech alternative music scene for their activities in a group called Tooth and Nail, Zubi Neti. They have performed their songs since 1980, recorded five CDs, shot a film for Czech TV, and published their poetry, and worked on numerous soundtracks for theater. And uh, Pavla's works, works as a cultural theorist, and Marka writes plays, is a director, actress, and also a writer for children. So I asked them to join me on stage so we could have some woman power up here. And um, very wonderful to have them. I also wanted to thank the American Center for hosting a wonderful conversation earlier today and also dedicate the spirit of some of these events to Philip Guston, the artist who was a friend whose wonderful uh, comedic, parodic, intense image is uh, always in front of us as the logo for this festival. And he was a, a very deep person and an incredible artist who kept working into his late years. So he's an inspiration. So we will begin with a piece called Stitching Closed the Eye of the Falcon. Stitching Closed the Eye of the Falcon. Without care, without seed pearl, without stitching closed the eye of the falcon, without seemly rectitude, without the platitude of, oh, thou muddled media pundit, without questionable doubt or metabolism, without a geographic category of speech that will travail, without a hint or glint of secular mastery, without ritual framing, without a theatrical sense of illusion and bandying about in or on or inside a thermosphere, without it working against you, and when it does, being able to go on without it, without gavots, without gazelles that you study in neighboring Persian poetries, without spellation and without a diving bell, rapacious wildcats, without the sense of security you have always expected, without your familiar stage fright, without the caves, without the bombing of caves, without the mystery of caves that long to exist in the handprint, in the cave of that memory, without the caves in your memory of that mystery that lives in them, without the bombing of caves without the rivets that hold the whole machine together. Fastening together, asserting the rivet dominion without which you do not have a plan of fastening together, that wing together that hold the whole throbbing machine together. Fastening together of wings, of arms, for the automaton that holds the capital together without its own mind of wheels and cogs and mudras that run the show without all the pixels and efforts of more dominion without borders to cross without needing to carry things over borders how will you survive the invasion of your homeland is it coming 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 is it coming 
coming soon. The invasion of your homeland coming, coming, coming soon. Without it, what call in the night? What call is answered? What nuance? What tantrum in the night? What martyrdom of dreaming your own birth? your own end of history, or end of speculation of that history. What call, what alarm is sounding deep in the home, home, home. And the next piece I will do solo. It's a piece called Make Up on Empty Space. And in uh, Buddhist psychology, it's what the feminine principle does. It uh, creates these environments and atmospheres and um, adorns empty space and then takes it all, deconstructs it, and then puts it on again and then deconstructs it, and then puts it on again. Makeup on empty space. I am putting makeup on empty space, all patinas convening on empty space, rouge blushing on empty space. I am putting makeup on empty space, pasting eyelashes on empty space, painting the eyebrows of empty space, piling creams on empty space, painting the phenomenal world. I am hanging ornaments on empty space, gold clips, lacquer combs, plastic hairpins on empty space. I'm sticking wire pins into empty space. I pour words over empty space, enthrall the empty space, packing, stuffing, jamming empty space, spinning necklaces around empty space. Fancy this, imagine this, painting the phenomenal world. Bangles on wrists, Pendants hung on empty space. I am putting my memory into empty space. Undressing you, hanging the wrinkled clothes on a nail, hanging the green coat on a nail. Dancing in the evening, it ended with dancing in the evening. I am still thinking about putting makeup on empty space. I wanted to scare you the hanging night. The drifting night, the morning night, daughter of troubled sleep. I wanted to scare you. I bind as far as cold day goes. I bind the power of 20 husky men. I bind the seductive, colorful women, all of them. I bind the massive rock. I bind the hanging night, the drifting night, the morning night, daughter of troubled sleep. I am binding my debt. I magnetize the phone bill. I bind the root of my sharp pointed tongue. I cup my hands in water, splash water on empty space, water drunk by empty space. Look what thoughts will do. Look what words will do. From nothing to the face, from nothing to the root of the tongue, from nothing to speaking of empty space. I bind the ash tree. I bind the yew. I bind the willow. I bind uranium. I bind the uneconomical, unrenewable energy of uranium dash uranium to empty space. I bind the color red. I seduce the color red to empty space. I put the sunset in empty space. I take the blue of his eyes and make an offering to empty space, renewable blue. I take the green of everything coming to life. It grows and climbs into empty space. I put the white of the snow at the foot of empty space. I clasp the yellow of the cat's eyes sitting in the black space. I clasp them to my heart, empty space. I want the brown of these old floors to rise up 
to empty space. I take the floor apart to find the brown again. I bind it up again under spell of empty space. I want to take these old walls apart. I am rich in my mind thinking of this. I am thinking of putting makeup on empty space. Everything crumbles around empty space. The thin, dry weed crumbles. The milkweed is blown into empty space. I bind the stars reflected in your eye. From nothing to these typing fingers. From nothing to the legs of the elk from nothing to the neck of the deer, from nothing to porcelain teeth, from nothing to the fine stand of pine in the forest. I kept it going when I put the water on, when I let the water run, sweeping together in empty space. There is a better way to say empty space. Turn yourself inside out and you might disappear. You have a new definition in empty space. What I like about impermanence is the clash of my big body with empty space. I am putting the floor back together again. I am rebuilding the wall. I am slapping mortar on bricks. I am fastening the machine together with delicate wire. There is no eternal thread. Maybe there is thread of pure gold. I am starting to sing inside about empty space. There is some new detail every time. I am taping the picture I love so well on the wall. Moonless black night beyond country plaid curtains. Red dakini stomping on an empty space corpse. Everything illuminated out of empty space. I hang the black linen dress on my body. The hanging night, the drifting night, the morning night daughter of troubled sleep. This occurs to me. I hang up a mirror to catch stars. Everything occurs to me out in the night in my skull of empty space. I go outside in starry ice. I build up the house again in memory of empty space. This occurs to me about empty space, that it is never to be mentioned again. Fancy this. Imagine this painting the phenomenal world. There's talk of dressing the body with strange adornments to remind you of a vow to empty space. There's talk of the discourse in your mind like a silkworm. I wish to venture into a not chiseled place. I pour sand on the ground. Objects and vehicles emerge from the fog. The canyon is dangerous tonight. Suddenly there are warning lights. The patrol is helpful in the manner of guiding. There is talk of slowing down. There is talk of a feminine deity. I bind her with a briar. I bind with the tooth of a tiger. I bind with my quartz crystal. I magnetize the world. I cover myself with jewels. I drink Amrita. There is some new detail every time. There is a spangle on her shoe. There is a stud on her boot. The tires are studded for the difficult climb. I put my hands to my face. I am putting makeup on empty space. I wanted to scare you with the night that scared me, the drifting night, the moaning night. Someone was always intruding to make you forget empty space. You put it all on. You paint your nails. You put on scarves. All the time adorning empty space. Whatever your name is, I tell you, empty space. With your fictions, with your dancing, come around to it. With your funny way of singing, come around to it. With your smiling, come to it. With your enormous retinue and accumulations, come around to it. With your extras, come round to it. With your good fortune, with your lazy fortune, come round to it. When you look most like a bird, that is the time to come around to it. When you are cheating, come to it. When you are in your anguished head, when you are not sensible, when you are insisting on the praise from many tongues, it begins with the root of the tongue. It begins with the root of the heart. There is a spinal cord of wind singing and moaning in empty space. And next we are going to do Jack Kerouac Dream. 
and um, the history. It's just a, just a dream, a visitation. Jack Kerouac dream. He's talking speedily about the evil of the feminine, but he likes it. Oh, bitter tones of the demon feminine. He's in a repressed New England winter room, but oddly, it's like the old whorehouse in Eldora with bats inside the walls. There's peeling wallpaper of gold fleur-de-lis pattern on green on the far side, and his coat of arms, or rather, his mother's arm coat arm chair is close by. It looks like a shrunken deer's head, size of a rabbit's foot, with French letters crudely scrawled on a wooden plaque beneath. A peur, a peur, translates is fear, but cockney too, or sounds like espoir, hope. He's shivering in an old camel's hair coat, smoking Chesterfield's old golds in front of a raging fire. He's wanting to hunt and gather, hunt and gather, he says, but it's too cold. Where can we go to forage now that all the skies are broken? I'm thinking if only I were born earlier, I could love him, take care of him. Close to his face now, I see its raging corpuscles in the dancing firelight. Intricate Aborigine designs tattooed on a remarkably pristine visage. It's a drift, flesh and bone, mortification, deadpan, life's a raked field. I'm part of a Buddhist plot to get him to be reborn, to liberate all sentient beings. I'm inviting him to give a reading at the Academy of the Meticulous Future. But what may I offer? I tried calling. Your phone was dead, was why I came. I tried calling. Mm, he's off somewhere else, his eyes moist and glassy. And this next is an older piece uh, which comes from a uh, memory of and some of the history of the protests we were doing at the Rocky Flats uh, Plutonium, a little like Temerine, Rocky Flats Plutonium plant just outside Boulder, Colorado. This was in the 70s and we, we kept the protests going for 20 some years and the plant has been closed. There are very serious issues about um, how to protect uh, the citizenry because, of course, plutonium has a half-life of nearly a quarter of a million years. And there have been some very interesting uh, proposals from Joanna Macy, who's uh, been very involved with the scientific peace community and uh, suggests that we, we train our young people to be guardians. It would be like doing military service to uh, keep this site clear. And there are battles still going on because there's uh, polluted soil and they want to turn it into a park, into a, you know, a family place where you can walk your dog and yet there's still this um, incredible um, poison, toxicity there. So this is a little uh, memory of some of the protest and with uh, Daniel Ellsberg and Allen Ginsberg, the Bergs, the two Bergs. And it's called I Remember Being Arrested. And it takes a, a form from the wonderful poet and painter, Joe Brainerd. So I remember being arrested. I remember being arrested at Rocky Flats nuclear weapons plant. What I was wearing, a red and white Hawaiian shirt, white straw hat with plaid ribbon, white pants with a gentle crease down the front. 
I remember the guards in their black action suits. I remember thinking they are just boys. I remember the guards with their megaphones giving a countdown as we squatted on the Rocky Flats property. You have 10 minutes to evacuate the premises. You have nine minutes to evacuate the premises. You have eight minutes. You have seven minutes. You have six minutes. You have five minutes. You have four minutes. You have three minutes, two minutes, one minute, and so on. I remember what a beautiful day it was, how passive the mountains looked, how majestic. I remember thinking all this could disappear. I remember thinking I was six years old when this place was built, how it cost something like $250 million, how the word trigger is a funny word, the name for a horse, for a gun, not a bomb. I remember thinking the word button was a funny word to use. I remember the 10 pound plutonium buttons extracted from fuel rods were shipped to Rocky Flats on trains. I remembered tender buttons. I remembered we meditated on the train tracks and tried to stop the shipments of plutonium. I remember trying to sound intelligent when the microphone was shoved in my face and not just singing, we shall overcome. I remember thinking it's hard to visualize plutonium, something that is invisible and doesn't exist in nature. I remember that it comes from uranium. I remember trying to visualize bombarding uranium with neutrons. I remember trying to visualize the chart of elements as it hung on my high school wall while riding in the bus to the courthouse in Golden. I remember being with Alan in Chicago during the Chicago 7 trials. I remember thinking that I would demonstrate with him anywhere in the world. I remember being with him at a gay rights benefit in Aspen, how we were in a bathroom right before the reading and he needed to inject the needle with insulin into his arm. I remember his good cheer on the bus to be booked in Golden, also his gentle anger. I remember how I went and Xerox colored paper with mantras on them to hand out at the demonstrations in Chicago. We went to the park. It was getting dark. I remember a lot of people had megaphones. I remember I started chanting, Om, I'm Kring, Kling, Chamanda, Yay, Vijaya, Om, mine, Kring, Kling, Chamanda, Yay, Vijaya. I remember how we chanted mantras then, and we are chanting mantras now, and we will keep chanting mantras for the rest of our lives. I remember thinking as we rode the bus to Golden that it was a particular kind of bus reserved for prisoners or mental patients. I remember making a huge circle of human bodies for miles and miles around Rocky Flats. I remember when I was pregnant, I stayed away. I remember seeing the deformed calf born without hair at the stable where we would go horseback riding near Rocky Flats. I remember thinking I would go scatter some of Allen Ginsberg's ashes at Rocky Flats, but then I didn't act on that thought. I remember looking into my son's newborn face and wanting to save him from every possible hurt or damage. I remember thinking that the enemy may be invisible. I was in a rocking chair. I was holding him tightly. It was the middle of the night. I'm in a rogue state, getting unpredictable and strange. Just a rogue state itching to test my Haridan verbalistic range. Ours for the radical ecologist on the fringe. Oh, is the opportunity to make first war powers cringe. And genius is the hacker under alien skin. You better watch out every female activist akin. I'm in a rogue state, rogue state, rogue state. And we just have two more, and I'll read this uh, poem. It's after a Thai uh, form from Thailand called the Nirat, N-I-R-A-T, uh, and it's a separation song. And you start with one physical detail of the beloved's face or body, and out of that you create the full 
picture of that person. And I wrote this for my husband, Ed Bowes. So Nirat, separation song, saw his cheekbone. Saw his cheekbone, saw it again, clean on the eye, clean against the eye, the ridge, the lean ridge, the graceful, stoical ridge, clean against the eye, ridge without shame, crossing the bridge, and he so far away, I have to travel for my bread and butter, saw his sweet shape a bone, gentle line, stoics, thin line, flesh, a rise of color was on it, the flesh, not blush, but man's stoic, thin line, this map of Wuhan to find my way, and he so far away, wish he was on this way with me, and I'm not walking so well saw his question, do you need to travel so hard? Saw it and heard my mind, do you need, do you need? Now mourning the car, now mounting it, do you need and all the way in China? It's far to his question and watch the passing show, saw syllables and heard his long ah tones. The charms of this he, this he, the loved one. What I see in him, radical and the need is pure. Saw his gait, a centaur's, make him mythical. He is my celestial centaur. Saw the gait, do you need? And hold me between legs and bound his strong legs. To think always of that exile out of there, that there that crazes you, that here that crazes you, a strange dynasty. But over here, I move my poetry toward him. See the way I lie down with Buddha in Bangkok. See my faith astride the Tao gardens of Wuhan. See his body, and I'm the old one. Wandering, do you need, he said. Working, do you need, I'm the old. And rocking back and forth. When we loved each other, we were in a languid season. The war was behind us. His face rang clear, clean against the eye. And we'll finish with a piece, um, an oral piece, sort of a scat piece called Skin Meat Bones. And this came out of a dream in which I saw these words as notes. And I meditated on the surface reality of uh, being in this skin, the skin we can see, and then the uh, going a little deeper in to the meat of our experience and then the tantric vision of it all comes down to bones, the skeletal, the old whales and mice. Okay, skin, meat, bones. I've come to tell you of the things dear to me what I've discovered of the skin eat bones. Your body waking up so sweetly. Skin. Dawn light, it's green. Skin. I'm in hungry repose. Meat, it's getting close to motion. Oh, skeleton bone. You might stretch it now. Skin, so warm flesh. And lasting a while, bone. Like a bone creaking, memory like a bone creaking, little laughter lines around the eyes, and then how the mouth's redder than the rest, meat or nipples, a purple ribcage of bones. It's morning anywhere, both sitting. 
and lying around in my weary tinsel skin. Gotta get up and walk around in my cumbersome skin. Put on lightweight cotton skin. And shuffling skin slippers. The light's going to make his raw skin. And vulnerable meat or hard bones. I could pierce it. I'll grow new skin, undergo big character change. Please get under my skin. Get under my skin. Take hold of me. Interest or annoy me intensely. Get under my skin. Skin. Jump me out of my skin. No skin. Off your nose, Buster. He's thin skin. She's thick. Dermis and epidermis maybe. Gentle hair, fill on surface of milk this morning, only skin. Let's go to the oily skin. Tendency of high frequency alternating current to flow through the outer layer only of a conductor. Okay, you've wounded me, but it's only skin. I'm sitting down in my sweet smelling clammy skin to eat some juicy meat. One man's meat is another man's poison. Animal flesh is tasty. Had a dream the meat was turned inside out. Flowers blooming there. Had a dream the jackals came. This was in India to collect the meat of my father's forefingers. Oh, cloud shaped like a tenderloin steak. Tree meat, meat of Buddha. Had a meat sandwich, had a meat day. Everyone was carrying their meat around, flinging it in the breeze. Small town, downtown, spring. Time to show off your meat. Go home when it's dark and sit down with the bones. I live in a bare bones room. He's working my fingers to the bone. My friend Stephen is living close to the bone. I'm boning up on my do fu Dante. Williams, Carlos Williams, Campus. And why is he such a bonehead? Won't listen to a thing I say. And why are they so bone idle? Won't do a thing I say. I'm gonna point my average bone at you and get you wiser. I've got a bone to pick with a senator. I've got a bone to pick with a pentagon. The bone of contention has to do with whether or not we get our lease. Our old 68 boards and old bone shaker. Ivory, dentine, whalebone, dominoes, dice, castanets, corset are some of the things made a bone. But after I die, make of my bones. Thank you. And Marta, thank you so much.